The Cerrado, known in Brazil as the Cerrado, is an arid brush savanna encompassing 120 million hectares across central Brazil. It has been called the world's last agricultural frontier. Throughout Brazil's history, the area, which derives its name from the Portuguese word for closed, inaccessible lands, had shown little promise for supporting or sustaining food and crop production. Attempts to grow crops in the Cerrado, which is equivalent in size to the American Midwest, had resulted in low yields or complete crop failures. Following a decade of global depression and the Second World War, the international market was at a standstill. Several years of severe frosts had drastically reduced crop yields, and Brazil's largest export, coffee, was in short supply. In the hopes of turning around Brazil's fortunes, the David and Nelson Rockefeller-funded IRI Research Institute started an ambitious research program in the region. In 1956, the Institute brought a young American soil scientist, Dr. A. Colin McClung, to work with Brazilian counterparts to improve conditions for coffee production. McClung, who grew up as one of eight children in West Virginia, first experienced the challenge of farming infertile land during the Dust Bowl. Intrigued by tropical soils and international agriculture, Dr. McClung became fascinated with the fertility problems that were plaguing the Cerrado. While conducting his research and analyzing the complexity of Cerrado soils, Dr. McClung soon discovered that the land actually shared many similarities with the soil he had studied as a young student in North Carolina. Because coffee was slow growing, he employed a research strategy of planting annual crops to see if he could more quickly identify underlying soil problems. His studies showed that acidity, toxic levels of aluminum, and micronutrient deficiencies severely limited plant growth. Dr. McClung concluded that with a combination of lime, micronutrients, and fertilizer, the Cerrado could be made suitable for production of crops as diverse as coffee, soybeans, corn, and cotton. Within a year, his studies showed unprecedented promise of improving yields by as much as 300 percent. Dr. McClung had unlocked the potential of the Cerrado for agriculture. A region that had previously been written off as wasteland soon drew interest. Test plots began cropping up in the region, and individual farmers slowly began applying lime and fertilizer to their fields. The opening of the Cerrado had begun. However, the new methods could not reach their full potential without an integrated system of research, infrastructure, and governmental support. In the early 1970s, in the state of Minas Gerais, newly appointed State Secretary of Agriculture, Alison Paulinelli, worked to lay the groundwork needed to expand on Dr. McClung's findings. From an early age, Paulinelli was drawn to the land. Around the age of 13, his father had given him part of the family farm as a challenge. He was struck by the acidity of the soil and spent the next several years researching new agricultural methods. As secretary, he was determined to increase support of agricultural research and training by integrating teaching and research entities and encouraging collaboration between universities and farmers. He also proposed a new model for rural credit in which farmers received low interest loans and were able to keep and reinvest a share of their profits. Paulinelli had been long convinced of the Cerrado's potential for food production and saw agricultural growth in the region as the key to Brazil's economic success more farmers came to take advantage of the opportunities he created. Based on this success, in 1974, Paulinelli was named Brazil's Minister of Agriculture. Armed with the understanding that improved soil quality was intricately related to social development, Minister Paulinelli introduced several programs aimed at supporting agricultural development throughout Brazil. Under his leadership, the ministry funded new infrastructure projects. One of his first initiatives was the Polo Centro project, aimed at supporting individual farmers working in the Cerrado. 
The project's goals of developing agricultural production and rural communities on millions of hectares across the Cerrado region were surpassed in just three short years. Minister Paulinelli was also instrumental in founding the Brazilian Corporation of Agricultural Research, known by its Portuguese acronym, Embrapa. It created a national system of research, technical, and administrative support to farmers and agribusiness. Brazil now had its own national research center to guide critical agricultural advancements in the coming decades. When he left office in 1979, the opening of the Cerrado was having a dramatic impact on life in Brazil. One of the first to join the newly established Embrapa was Edson Lobato, a promising young Brazilian soil scientist. Lobato, the son of a plumber, was the first in his family to attend college. He intended to pursue aeronautical engineering, but remembering his boyhood trips to his grandfather's farm, decided his future was in agriculture. After completing a fellowship program for graduate studies in soil fertility in the United States, he returned to Brazil and began his career at Embrapa. Lobato had been advised by many not to waste his time working on Cerrado soils. But like McClung and Paulinelli before him, he strongly believed in the potential of the Cerrado for agriculture, forestry, and cattle production. He focused his research on the role of phosphates and integrated soil and crop management techniques, deciding that before the soil can be improved, you must first find what it's missing. Only then could the right nutrients and additives be determined. Lobato was soon placed in charge of coordinating several Embrapa programs, including outlining a plan for the new Cerrado Agricultural Research Center. Through outreach and education programs, Lobato collaborated with farmers and extension workers to implement the technologies and practices pioneered at Embrapa. His book, Cerrado, Soil Correction and Fertilization, has become a standard reference for farmers, researchers, and students seeking solutions to soil fertility problems. During the course of his 30-year career, Lobato's work to enhance soil fertility and counteract water stress helped set the stage for the Cerrado's emergence as an agricultural powerhouse, now with an impact that was global in nature. The Brazilian Cerrado of today is far different from the barren wasteland of the 1950s. The development of the once infertile region into highly productive land accounts for the world's single greatest increase in farmland since the settlement of the American Midwest. From only 200,000 hectares of arable land in 1955, the Cerrado has well over 40 million hectares in cultivation today. Due to the transformation of the Cerrado and the powerful research facility that Embrapa has become, Brazil today enjoys tremendous success as a world leader in agricultural production. It is among the global leaders in production of crops as diverse as soy, coffee, cassava, corn, cotton, rice, and sugar. In addition, the Cerrado supports more than half of Brazil's beef industry. The impact on Brazil has been phenomenal, making food more available and more affordable. And the standard of living for many rural communities has been enhanced greatly. And the potential extends far beyond Brazil's borders. Dr. Norman E. Borlaug, Nobel Peace Prize laureate and father of the Green Revolution, predicts that the advances and technology discovered in the Cerrado will move to other tropical countries like Colombia and Venezuela, and into Central and Southern Africa where similar soil problems exist. Science moves across borders and it doesn't need passports. The advancements in the Cerrado have the potential to transform millions of hectares of previously marginal land, benefiting hundreds of millions of people around the world who still struggle to get the food they need. It's a tremendous accomplishment. I say one of the greatest of the last century. Thousands of scientists, business leaders, and farmers have contributed to this transformation. But for their pioneering roles in unlocking the Cerrado's vast potential, laying the groundwork necessary for agricultural expansion, 
and conducting the research and outreach needed to apply new technologies and increase production, three men, A. Colin McClung, Alison Paulinelli, and Edson Lobato, are truly deserving to be honored as the 2006 World Food Prize laureates.